Intel just broke the rules and gave frame generation to everybody, even RTX 30 series owners. Yep, hell just froze over. Also, we're saying goodbye to an entire era of GPUs and somehow Battlefield 6 is gonna run on a potato, but not on the Steam Deck. Zuckerberg is out here warning that you're gonna fall behind in life if you don't wear his smart glasses. And GTA Online, get ready to show your ID just to spawn in. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, guys, it's, it's true. Rockstar wants to check your age before you can hijack a car in GTA Online. And yes, that probably means face scans. Privacy, never heard of her. Let's take a peek. Now we talked on the last show about this. Obviously people in the UK dealing with the new age restrictions on the web using Death Stranding to actually pass through ID checks. Shout out to Norman Reedus for helping people out here. Also on my last video, got a lot of comments. I'll show them here. People saying, dude, just get a VPN. VPN solves the problem. Well, tell that to all the people that aren't gonna be able to play GTA Online soon. Allegedly. Let's dig into this. GTA Online could soon require age verification to play or access select features. Rockstar Games is reportedly planning to implement age verification in GTA Online to play the game or access some of the online game's features. Now, this came from a tweet from Tez Fun 2. We'll pull it up here. Uh, apparently, there is some leaked source code. I'm guessing that it's excluded for now, but will eventually go into effect. I think the UK is probably number one on the list for this to be enabled for in terms of regions, but check this out. You may need to verify your age to access GTA Online or certain features like phone messages, text chat, Snapmatic may be restricted until you verify your age. Now, you couldn't say which regions could be targeted for these age verification checks, but obviously the UK is going to be number one on the list there, we would imagine. Although age checks are yet to be mandatory, select publishers and developers already started implementing some form of age verification ahead of time, like Roblox and Epic Games to prevent younger players from accessing features like voice chat or text chat. So it wouldn't be surprising for Rockstar to do the same in GTA Online. Online. Now, I saw on Twitter, we had Asmongold tweet this out. Let me know what you think about this. I have my own thoughts. Internet real ID is inevitable, especially for social media. Denying this might feel good, but it's a lie and you know it. What isn't inevitable is private companies having access to our public records. The best solution, this is the interesting part, the best solution is a government authentication token that only verifies info. My thoughts on this, hot take, gonna drop it. Forcing ID checks in the name of protecting kids is one of the, my opinion, dumbest ideas as ever. It doesn't help anyone. What we really need to push is parents stepping up and doing their job, not offloading responsibility by restricting everybody else. There are countless real issues worth addressing, especially when it comes to protecting kids. Personally, I don't think this is one of them. Also, uploading your ID to these various sites, not a great idea. And uh, the government taking it over, the least efficient entity ever, is probably not the right solution. Let me know where you weigh in on this down below. I'm sure you guys are gonna, few of you are gonna disagree with me, maybe a lot of you. I don't know. Let me know where you sit down in the comments below. NVIDIA just dropped the the axe on your old GTX cards, if you remember. If you're still on like a 1060 or 980 Ti, this is your eviction notice, but there's just a sliver of hope when it comes to security updates. Let's take a peek. Now we have an update to the support timeline for some of these older GPUs and also Windows 10 users from Nvidia. Check this out. Nvidia game ready driver support for Maxwell, Pascal, and Volta era GPUs until 2025. So you're gonna get game ready drivers until October of 2025. Nvidia also extended Windows 10 and legacy GPU support through 2028. Let's dig into the details on that. NVIDIA has announced an update to its support timeline for older GPUs and Windows 10 users. The company confirmed that GeForce game ready driver support for GPUs based on Maxwell, Pascal, Volta architectures will end in October of this freaking year. However, these GPUs will continue to receive quarterly security updates until October of 2028, extending total support to 11 years. Now, that applies to both GeForce and Quadro models built on the same architecture. It's important to remember that security updates are not game-ready optimizations. These GPUs will continue to be supported, but day one support for newly released games will be an issue. So now you're still gonna get quarterly uh, security patches until 2028, but don't expect new feature updates, performance boost, your card is basically gonna be frozen in time. So RTX users get a, a year extra support until October, 2026. All right, so what about Windows 10? Obviously there's big push. Let's get everyone on Windows 11, everyone off Windows 10, supports ending, we'll check this out. And NVIDIA has updated the timelines on that. NVIDIA is extending game-ready driver support for all GeForce RTX GPUs on Windows 10 until October 2026. This is one year beyond Microsoft's official end of support date for the operating system, which is set for October 14th of 2025. Coming right up here. This move ensures that users who haven't migrated
migrated to Windows 11 can still benefit from day zero optimizations for the latest games and applications. How many of you are still running Windows 10 and haven't made the switch over yet? I know there's actually been a lot of people who have commented on videos, I'm curious about this too, who have said, listen, Windows 10 support, that's ending, I'm gonna give Linux a shot. And that's why you're now seeing Linux users hitting a new milestone. Now 5% of operating system users are using Linux, which is a new high for Linux in terms of user share and market share. So I think uh, with Windows 10 support coming to an end, you're seeing a lot of people dabble with Linux. Let me know if you're one of them down below or if you just said, screw it, I'm gonna just upgrade to Windows 11. Now, Windows 10 remains widely used despite being a decade old. According to recent data, Windows 11 only surpassed Windows 10 in market share earlier this month because of the big push, obviously, that Microsoft is making. By continuing driver support for Windows 10 and RTX GPUs, NVIDIA is giving users more flexibility and time to transition to a newer operating system without losing out on performance updates. Now, the mixed reactions on Reddit, I've kind of looked through a bunch of the comments. You got a lot of people on there who are have like mixed emotions. A lot of people love their Pascal era cards, but also realistic. You know, after years of service, a lot of people realizing, hey, maybe it's time to move on. But hey, you've got uh, quarterly security updates uh, and patches until 2028, so. Maybe that helps. Let me know uh, if you're still running one of these cards in the comments down below. And if you're considering upgrading, which card you're considering upgrading to. Let me know. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button if you're not already. A bunch of you guys are watching the videos, but you're not yet subscribed. Love to have you on the journey. Click that button. If you like the video, throw a like and leave a comment. Battlefield 6. My gosh, Just seeing a whole bunch of people streaming the event, the multiplayer event. Well, it's basically gonna be able to run on a toaster, but EA still says it's not gonna work on the Steam Deck. Okay. Okay. Let's dig into it. Battlefield six specs shockingly low <laughs> let's take a peek at this battlefield six requirements suggest it'll run on surprisingly modest pcs the eavp says still not gonna work on the steam deck though october 10th of this year we're getting battlefield back baby battlefield six and a lot of the gameplay that i've seen looks like a battlefield game and it, it looks like it should be uh pretty fun we'll see where we actually end up when it comes out but surprisingly modest specifications for such a modern title now according to ea the game only demands a 10th gen intel or ryzen 3 thousand series AMD processor with, check this out, NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti or 6700 XT. Uh, and it, it's left off of this particular site on Tom's hardware, or at least I can't find it. You have the recommended specs for Battlefield 6. We're not talking about minimum on this one. Uh, check it out, 6700 XT, 3060 Ti, and the ARC B580 as well, which I know a lot of people uh, have been enjoying. And I have some news on those Intel cards that we'll talk about a little bit later. But I mean, check this out, 3700X or an Intel Core i7 10 700 as the recommended spec, 16 gigs of memory. Now the minimum specs, if we really wanna talk about minimum specs, I, you're not gonna have like an amazing time, but Ryzen 5 2600, Intel Core i5 8400, those processors launched in 2018, 2017. Now the minimum required GPU, if we wanna dabble in that, RX 5600 XT, that's a six gigabyte card, or an NVIDIA RTX 2060 from 2019. Now obviously the game uh, is gonna require a discrete GPU, so uh, those of you wanting to play this on a Steam Deck, not gonna happen. I also don't think you you would have a great time playing this particular title on a Steam Deck, maybe I'm wrong. So minimum specs, dual core CPU, six gigs of RAM and a hundred gigabyte install, which is probably the most challenging part for a PC that has specs listed that are the minimum specs. Now you can likely play the game on a handheld that supports an external GPU, which would be like the ROG Ally X, Lenovo Legion Go S, upcoming handheld consoles that feature the Strix Halo chip, like the GPD Win 5, which uh, looks pretty freaking cool, can conceivably run the game as well. That's because it's equipped with a powerful integrated GPU that can outclass the RTX 4070 laptops. But until we get more mainstream options that are powered by these processors, most handhelds do not have the graphical horsepower to play Battlefield 6, even with its modest minimum and recommended requirements. Now I'm gonna play a little bit of the multiplayer trailer here. I'm just gonna say, no matter what you think, bringing Limp Biscuit in for the trailer, pretty cool. Does that show my age? Is that the millennial in me talking? Do we hate Limp Biscuit? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's a pretty smart move. Break stuff? Using the song Break Stuff in a Battlefield trailer? It's just good marketing. Let me know if you're excited for the new Battlefield game in the comments down below and if you've checked out some of the gameplay that's been going around. Intel just handed out frame gen support to AMD and Nvidia. And yes, even your dusty RTX 30 series card gets a bone thrown its way. Let's dig into this, it's kinda cool. Yeah, Intel opened the floodgates. Check this out. Intel XESS2 is now supported by AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Now there's some good silver lining in this that I'm gonna 
gonna talk about in a second, aside from the obvious that we'll get into. Intel XCSS2 support expands to AMD and NVIDIA featuring shader model 6.4 support. If you're a fan of this and we wanna show Intel some props, leave a like on the video. Say thanks, Intel. Intel's XCSS technology, previously associated only with super resolution, has been updated for the Arc Battle Mage launch to include frame gen and low latency components, aligning with what AMD and NVIDIA currently offer. That's not it though. Today, Intel released an update for XCSS2 and published the software development kit version 2.1.0 with the primary change being support for non-Intel GPUs. Essentially, this update enables AMD and NVIDIA cards to use Intel XCSS2. And what's important, these GPUs can now use the entire portfolio of XCSS technology, which uh, I would imagine would also include XELL, which uh, is designed to hopefully uh, reduce input latency in games and make them feel a little bit more responsive. Intel's already confirmed that cross-vendor support for XCSS2 requires shader model 6.4. This means that GeForce GTX 10 series and newer or Radeon RX 5000 series and newer will be compatible with this technology. Now this is huge. What used to be locked into Team Blue is now a free for all. AI frame gen for everybody, yay. Intel also clarified that XELL is tied to the frame gen component. It will not be supported as a standalone feature on non-Intel GPUs. In other words, you won't be able to use XELL without enabling frame gen. And I was like cruising around Reddit just seeing what people were saying. Um, a lot of people saying don't expect perfection with this and that XCSS is still lagging behind DLSS and FSR and image fidelity, but that gap is closing. And you know, no matter what it is, we love a little bit of competition. So love to see it. Also, I'm not sure if developers have exactly rallied around it yet. So something to keep in mind as well. But for ARC owners, this might help you salvage a little bit of pride. You know, if Intel can garner game dev support, this could finally stir up some competition in the upscaling space. So as soon as game developers update their libraries to newer XCSS, the democratization of upscaling and frame gen will expand to Intel technology. This will put even more pressure, this is an important part, this will put even more pressure on Nvidia who have never opened their upscaling and frame gen to AMD and Intel. Now we'll see how much pressure you can actually put on a $4 trillion company but I mean, it's a step in the right direction. Also, Microsoft just hit the $4 trillion market cap as well, joining NVIDIA. Let's check out what the comments are saying down below. We have ancient gameplays here. Uh, it says XCSS is pretty decent with DP4A, quite better than FSR 3.1.4 is right now. And now being able to use XELL and XCSS FG is a nice addition. Uh, we have someone here that saw some gameplay. I saw some gameplay from Cyberpunk with XCSS FG on a B580. It actually ran pretty well. The motion clarity looks slightly better than FSR FG. This will be a nice substitute for those who can't use DLSS FG. Uh, another comment that's huge for old GPUs and AMD 6.7 series, but we'll have to wait to see the performance. This is amazing, Intel jumping back into the fight. Well done, Intel. Shows long-term commitment to the ARC product line. That is an interesting take as well. Intel coming out with this, I sure hope that they continue to expand on those ARC cards and just provide more competition in the space. Again, think that's good for everybody. Let me know where you weigh in on all of this down in the comments below. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg. He says if you're not not wearing AI glasses in the future, you'll basically be dumb. So now your vision and your brain belong to Meta and not the cool Meta, Meta PCs. A little plug there. What do you think about that? Uh, let's dig into it. Yeah, that's right. Zuckerberg is saying that people without AI glasses will be at a disadvantage in the future. I have a pair of the Ray-Bans. I've used them a couple times just for content and messing around. I, I'm not like a power user of these. It seems like the power users of these glasses I mainly see on Instagram and they're making videos like this. This guy ended up uh, using those Ray-Bans to record this. He got a bunch of his friends to come in and pretend to be Target employees. Fun fact, this guy lives where I live here in Arizona and dude just got arrested for pulling all of these pranks. So if this is the future of AI glasses that we've been promised, I think we have little ways to go in terms of the use cases, but I digress. Echoing statements shared in his super intelligence focused blog post this morning, Mark Zuckerberg expanded on his bullish ideas that the glasses will be the primary way that users interact with AI in the years ahead. During Meta's second quarter earnings, Earnings call, the social networking exec told investors he believes people without AI glasses will be at a disadvantage in the future. This is kind of interesting, isn't it? I mean, the guy who sells glasses is saying that everybody should buy glasses. Huh, kind of weird. Obviously, Meta has been focused on building smart glasses like the Ray-Ban Meta glasses, Oakley Meta glasses. The glasses let users listen to music, take photos or videos, or prank people at targets, apparently. These wearables have turned into a surprise hit for the company as revenue from sales of the Ray-Ban Metas more than tripled year over year. But Zuckerberg believes there's more to be done with displays. What does he have planned? Let's well, take a peek. This is what we've been maxing out with Reality Labs over the last five to 10 years, basically doing the research on all these different things. Now, the Reality Labs 
division has been a money pit for the company, so it's not surprising the exec wants to justify its cost to investors by positioning it as a bet on the future of AI and consumer computing in general. For example, Meta said Reality Labs operating loss was $4.53 billion in the second quarter. Since 2020, the unit has lost nearly $70 billion. However, the future of consumer AI may or may not be in the form of glasses. Now, if you'll remember, I covered this a while back. It's been months now. The former Apple executive Johnny Ive, legendary designer, has a startup in a $6.5 billion deal to build new consumer devices for interacting with AI. There's things like AI pins and pendants. Wearables is an entire sector of AI at this point. It's just what's gonna come out on top. I think that's the big question. Glasses for now seem to make the most sense as many people already wear them. Do most people wear glasses? Let's find out. Let's do some research together. Percentage of people who wear glasses. Whoa, I didn't know this. Now this was uh, commissioned by Warby Parker who makes glasses, this research study. So I don't know what that means, but approximately 64% of adults in the US wear prescription eyeglasses. Huh, learned something new today. So him hedging his bets on glasses, maybe that makes a lot of sense. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. The other thing that's awesome about glasses is they're gonna be the ideal way to blend the physical and digital worlds together, he said. So the whole metaverse vision, I think, is going to end up being extremely important too. And AI is going to accelerate that. The future is getting weird. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Guys, that's gonna do it for today. Make sure that you uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Videos coming out all the time. So if you like content like this and you wanna keep up with it, hit subscribe like comment if you don't like it sorry we'll see you next time